Hi, I'm Ken Crawford, president of the Alaska Conference, and I want to show you around my Alaska. I love it here. This is not the end of the world, but it's pretty close. I love Alaska. It's the greatest adventure you could ever imagine. If you want to find out more, go to our website, alaskaconference.org, and you'll find all kinds of information and stories on what Alaska is like. There's a constant collision between civilization and nature because we live next to each other. There's a feeling of remoteness. Not isolation, but remoteness. There is a vastness in the wilderness in Alaska. The mountains are more majestic. Nature is undisputed master. There's something about this country that sets off in me a craving for heaven. The living conditions are a challenge, I can tell you. But the needs in Alaska far outweigh the challenges of living here. This is one big place. Unbelievable. Alaska is the largest state. I can't believe the vastness of this part of our country. 230 Arctic villages and only 10 of them have been entered by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You know, the work isn't going to be finished anywhere until it's finished everywhere, and that includes these Arctic villages. Some people have a long way down to go before they finally find Jesus, but when they do, they are so grateful and thankful for what has happened to them. I want you to meet Tina Steenmeyer. She's one of those people. Hi, I'm Tina Steenmeyer here in Anchorage, Alaska. The person that you're looking at right now is a converted, changed person. Just a, a few years back, I had a, a habit, a cocaine habit, uh, to the tune of $5,000 a month. And God, through His mercies, have changed all of that. No rehab, no setbacks. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. No one could have told me that today this would have been uh, where I would be. I want you to know, guys, I prayed for this day, and we got a great one. But I am taking the spider webs for you. I want you to enjoy your experience. The only way that you can is if you know what you're doing, right? By the way, you didn't know that you were going to get some riding lessons. That's a bonus. So one is in the air, two is in the saddle. One is in the air, two is in the saddle. So I'll show you. Now, men especially, you definitely want to not ride the saddle. Tim, you walk, you're with me on that one? Yes, I am. Alrighty then. If you are not able to find that rhythm for whatever reasons, it's okay to hold on to the horn and lift yourself up. Okay? One morning, I had just a thought. I wonder how I could uh, find God's people. I knew that there were people around, and I'm speaking of the Seventh-day Adventists. And... Um, I remember looking into uh, uh, the phone book and then I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to Google. And I Googled uh, Seventh Day and uh, this church came up, which was O'Malley. I didn't know really what to do or, or what to say, so I just picked up the phone and called and spoke with the pastor. And I introduced myself, hi, my name is Tina Steenmeyer and I'd like to know what your service times are. And so he told me the service times. and. Unbeknownst to me, he wanted to know if I was visiting, uh, or excuse me, where I was visiting from. And so when he finally got uh, the question out, he learned that I was just uh, a few blocks down the road. And that was the beginning of the most incredible journey uh, that I have ever experienced. And the journey has not stopped. The journey is continuing. In times past, I sat in church and listened to the pastor and agreed with everything. and left the church and more often than not went to a restaurant and, uh, and if it was um, uh, in the afternoon then probably had um, uh, something to drink, an alcoholic beverage, and felt that it was okay. And so I never really had a relationship with the Lord and I just 
cried out to the Lord. I said, I know you're real. I've experienced you before and I want you back. I don't know how I got so far away from you. I won't give the glory to anyone but God, but the things that occurred in my life, no one could have told me that that could have happened to me to the point of wanting to divorce my husband and therefore divorce, divorce my daughter as well, uh, wanting to uh, live a life of, of a complete sinner, choosing to do so, and it was a dead end. So I went into uh, the church that Sabbath morning. That was the first time that I had ever gone to uh, an Adventist church. And just an incredible atmosphere of love. And I walked in the door and I met the pastor for the first time. And I remember saying to him, as I'm holding his hand and, and shaking his hand, I said, when can I become a member? I want to be baptized. And his, his expression <laughs> was blown away. I mean, his eyes were bugged and uh, he was, I, 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 and later I then learned that he needed to, um, uh, to have the visits and to make sure that, that I was grounded. Okay, gang, I do want you to be aware there's a lot of tall brush down here and there could be anything. So what that means is those of you by the way, that trail through there, that's a wild game trail. If you ever see those things in the woods and you're lost, never walk down them. You want to hold on to your horn just in case the horse may need to take off immediately. All right, we're just going to scoot through here. Come on. After my conversion, I sat both my husband and daughter down and I said to them in, in a loving way, I said, I want you to know that God has changed my life and things will change in this home. And I remember saying to my husband, I looked at him and I said, I love you very much. You are my husband, you're the head of my home. But until you start following after Jesus, I can't follow after you. And I'm not suggesting that this is what anyone should do. I'm just telling you my story. God helped us through that. I was plugged and I was entrenched and totally fired up. Then we got involved in prison ministry and that was wonderful. And that was the first time that I saw what God had pulled me out of. I went into the women's prison here in Anchorage. Actually, it's in Eagle River, just a short distance away. And it's a women's prison and speaking with some of the women there and hearing their stories, I knew without a doubt that God had pulled me out of the burning, burning flame and had set my feet solidly uh, planted upon His rock. And I am forever grateful for that. There are women that are still there that are struggling so, that don't have what we have. And shortly thereafter, the enemy was um, very very frightened with my commitment to the Lord. There was nothing that he could do to pull me out of his hand. Uh, he attempted by uh, taking my real estate practice away, which was fine with me because that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do Bible studies. And then he attacked at our home, putting that into a foreclosure state. And that was okay because I didn't want to live in a 5,000 square foot home anymore. I didn't want the things of the world and then the last thing that he attempted, and that was to turn me away from God by the death of my daughter. What he didn't realize, and I think still to this day, is that that seed that was planted just grew so many souls no one would have ever told me back then that today I would be involved with one of the largest evangelistic efforts to ever hit the state of Alaska. Voice of Prophecy partnered with the Alaska Conference of Seventh-day Adventists have put together a mailer we have sent out to every post office box in the state of Alaska. This is an invitation for them to come to know who Jesus Christ is. The invitation is real simple. 
they receive this mailer in their mailbox, they complete the form, send it back. Them sending it back to us tells us that they are interested in knowing who he is. Four years ago, I started riding horses. That was right after my uh, daughter's death. And uh, it's been uh, very therapeutic, very, very nice. Come on. After my daughter's death in August 2008, my husband became um, an Adventist, baptized in May of 2009. And he has been on fire for the Lord, as with I. And so, as God tells us, the two shall become one flesh. We are one. This morning before leaving for work, he held my hand and we knelt and prayed. This is the beauty of following after the Lord, no matter what the cost. And so I actually um, get the lesson sheets. Uh, these are their answer sheets that have come in. And so I correct and mail these out to them. Um, it is, it, it's one of the most, um, it's not work, <laughs> it really isn't. It is a joy, it's a labor of love. I'm able to communicate with um, the uh, school leaders that are all over the state. We pray together, we cry together. Some of the letters that are sent in from some of the areas um, in Alaska and some areas, especially the remote areas, the bush areas where there's not a lot of, of uh, activities, there's not a lot for people to do, especially in the winter when the nights are long and they're cold. And we've experienced a very bitter winter this year. And these letters that come in, one gal in particular uh, from a graph uh, I'm in communication with, she sent me her phone number and have asked if I would call and pray with her. She too um, have lost her son and um, it's been tough for her. And so these are the things that uh, we want to be involved with. We want to uh, not just push paper, but we actually want to get involved in the lives and, and let them know that they are, they're being prayed for. Uh, they send us things. There's um, a woman from Unilocleet uh, that has sent in funds to uh, uh, help in uh, providing Bibles for our prison work. It is amazing. And so the work that is done from this office is uh, the feeder division, really. It feeds into the other areas throughout the state. The Discover Bible School is not ending. As a matter of fact, we just uh, came back where I just uh, ended a trip up north in Talkeetna and uh, a small body of believers there and came back with seven new enrollments. This is huge for an area that is um, 200 plus people uh, within this uh, uh, um, community around the church. And so this is, this is huge. Discover Bible Schools is here to stay. And I'm excited about that. Down in continental United States in the lower 48, as we call it here, if you want to go to camp meeting, everybody in the local conference drives in and you have a big convocation and celebration together. Ha, that doesn't happen in Alaska. We actually have about six camp meetings and they're all regional camp meetings. And several of the ones that we have are all up through the Arctic. We have one here in Nome and uh, we have one in Dillingham, but this weekend, we're going to a camp meeting in Bethel, Alaska. It's about 500 miles northwest of Anchorage. And here's Kuskokwim Bay. And then Bethel is just up the river right here. There's probably 65 villages that follow all through this Kuskokwim River through to Hooper Bay, all of this area here. Ammonic, all of this area clear up to Unilcleet is... Uh, the watershed and Bethel is the hub. Bethel is our largest village in Alaska. Probably 6,000 people live there. That's a big village for Alaska. My name is Dennis Scandunas and I'm in Bethel, Alaska. My wife works at the school district to, to uh, pay for what we're doing here. The state of Alaska puts a lot of money into their education system. They build beautiful schools in every village around Alaska. Even the smallest villages with three or 400 people. But all of these schools need teachers badly. They really try to facilitate education here in this last frontier. Here in Bethel, we're looking at the high school. What we're looking for is 
teachers, public school teachers that are willing to come and to uh, go to these villages and teach the children, not just give them an education, but teach them about Jesus. I'm a school psychologist working here in Bethel, Alaska, which is in the southwestern corner of Alaska, out in the River Delta area, only accessible by plane or by river barge. And I have been privileged to come here through a miracle of the Lord. My husband Dennis and I were have been praying for years to be missionaries full-time somewhere. We'd experienced short-term volunteer mission trips through Maranatha and just longed to say thank you to the Lord for his blessings. So we began to explore. Um, we were down in South America doing a mission trip, Dennis doing some painting there, and uh, pulled up the Alaska Teacher Placement website, found an opening in Bethel here, pulled up the Alaska Conference website, saw there was a need here matching our need to help and not be in charge. And putting those together a few months later, here we are. And my role here involves flying to several villages to test students. Uh, you get to experience a, a different kind of life completely. This is not for everybody. You get on tiny airplanes, you're twisting in and out, you're being picked up at uh, airstrips by four-wheelers, snowmobiles. Um, it's awesome. I love it. I love the small planes flying. And you get to see the country that you couldn't see otherwise from the plane. Bethel has maybe from one end to another five and a half, six miles of road. But when the winter comes, the snowmobile is unlimited. And uh, that's a good part of the winter I enjoy. My husband Dennis has never spoken in front of a group until we came here. And shortly after we arrived, the missionary currently here was uh, had cancer, had to leave. And lo and behold, Dennis became the pastor. I'm a painter, so on one-on-one -on -one painting houses and all that for the church members, I can ramble on, and but I never spoke. I grew up with dyslexia pretty bad. My first sermon was, God tricked me, because if it was an opening looking for a, a pastor or a lay pastor, I wouldn't, I would have not taken it, I wouldn't have looked at it. In Bethel it gets really cold in the winter. It can even get down to 60 below wind chill and you need to be prepared. In Alaska, when the ground is frozen solid year round, not only do you have to build the buildings up off the ground, but all of your water lines and your sewer lines have to be above ground. And what I'm walking on is actually two water lines and they're enclosed in what's called Arctic pipe, which is solid insulation. Below, you can see the two sewer lines and the big cleanouts for the sewer lines. Of course, a lot of times in the winter when they get real cold snaps, then these lines will freeze solid. We froze the sewer pipes here in our building for a week and a half. The school was off. And one of the ways to be prepared is to have a beaver hat. This was made for me in Kotzebue. My husband also got one. And it keeps you extremely warm. Um, Dennis also goes out and he uses uh, beaver gloves and and um, so he stays warm when he's snowmobiling. In Alaska, most of the villages are on permafrost, which means the ground is frozen year-round. The only way you can build a building here is to get it up off the ground. Otherwise, it'll thaw the ground and the building goes every which way. The crack up there uh, is getting wider. This whole building, the whole uh, village, is on silt. And so as the temperatures freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw, it, uh, our whole building on this side slants down a good five inches, I'd say, from the middle where I'm standing over to this wall. Um, hopefully we don't crash at some point. But it's um, just part of life here. The buildings have to be leveled every now and then. So when I got here to Bethel and I realized I have to now, since the pastor left, preach, it, it was stressful, very stressful. But um, the Lord knew and, and I took it as that, that he knows I can do it. So I studied and I have 50, over 50 sermons in, in the two years we've been here. We've learned much more than we've given. Here in the village of Bethel, there's more taxis per capita than in the whole city of Anchorage, which has a quarter of a million people. I want you to meet some of our church members that own a taxi company. Hannah and Sonny are faithful church members in the Adventist church. Today, Hannah is our church treasurer. Now, Hannah invited Mary Bones to come to our church. My name is Mary Bones. I now live in Bethel, Alaska. I was born and raised in Kipnuk, 
My dad's from Trinity, like my mom is from Kepnak. I've been looking for something that's been missing, like um, a, a resting place, but I have never found it. And one day, Hannah, a church member, um, when I was walking to the store, asked me, come on, go to church. And I said, it's Saturday, and uh, maybe next time. And then again, I ran into her one day. Um, she asked me, there's a church, you come to I said, okay. Life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Conviction of Jesus Christ uh, started so heavy. Um, I was trying to understand what's going on. I was at home. And I've been thinking, why Sabbath? What is Sabbath? Every time I close my eyes, the scriptures lined up, um, seemed like in a big write, writings. Um, and then one day, um, I was in bed, and I just sit up and t sh sh kind of shook my husband. I said, I know what Sabbath is. That's a holiday that God sanctified it sanctified it and um, let it be a restful day for everybody. 2009, December 25, I knelt on my bed and um, started praying. I was crying. I was crying to the Lord that uh, I love the marijuana so much that he knows my heart that um, I have tried quitting myself three times, but I, I've been going back. But that time, 2009, 25, I told him, I want to give it to you as a birthday present. Please take desire out of my heart. Then after that, I, I didn't, I, I never go back to smoking marijuana. I thought it, I'd be sad, I, I thought I'd be lost, uh, but um, I felt better because every time, you know, I have never craved it no more. And then in end of December that year, I prayed again, crying to the Lord that gambling, <laughs> I love to gamble with cards, um, with money. And I told him, I told him to take that away again. And he did. I haven't touched the cards since then. I was trying to quit um, chewing tobacco, and then I did it with a five-day um, schedule. The devil trying to get to me again, but uh, I, I didn't go back to smoking even so. One day I wanted to get baptized, and um, I told my family, the devil will try to get to you every which way. I'd like you to meet my husband, Jim Bong. Hi. <laughs> okay, I love you. When my wife first uh, start, told me she wanted to come to church and stuff like that, I believe in God, uh, but I also believe I, you don't have to, be, have to go to church to, to believe in God or, or to worship God, you know. And some married go you know, go to church on Saturdays, you know. And I I did got in. I I was curious. I wanted to see what was going on. But my job in Bethel as uh, working for the city consists of hauling water and sewer. About eighty percent of the community here relies on hauled water and sewer. They don't have running water and stuff like that. And I'd come in. Saturdays, uh, spend 15 minutes here, a couple minutes here, you know, and started to get to know everybody and stuff like that. And in between, when I was doing my routes and stuff like that, I would stop in. Do you see God? I'm 
Them, but they decided to follow me. I had to move to a different position in my company to be able to get Saturdays off just to attend church. And now I work for Streets and Roads. And I was happy for the wife. She, her attitude and her personality all changed, which was, I enjoyed it, you know. Um, she don't do half the stuff that she used to do. <laughs> well, no, she don't do any of the stuff she used to do. Let me correct myself on that. I'm not looking no more. I have found Jesus. I'm not qualified, but the two years that I have been here, the Lord has blessed, and he can bless you. It's a nice church here, some natives here, some Koreans and, and Filipinos, and, and they're looking for a replacement also here as we leave. It's been uh, a privilege. Father, as we come here on, on the Sabbath, just thank you for the blessings that we know that there is a blessing in this day. So I would encourage anyone who is longing for adventure, longing to be able to give in a way that not everybody chooses or wants to do, but to come up here, to come to the villages, to experience a different kind of life, there is a huge need. As you can see, nothing gets wasted here in this state. If you look behind me, you can see that the, even the washers and dryers get used for dog kennels. Alaska is America's true mission field. And we need to remember that, that it is not like working in the inner cities or in Florida or Georgia or California. Rural Alaska is a world all of its own that has many, many challenges that lots of other places won't face. The last frontier is vast. It's larger than all but 18 countries in the world. In fact, it's larger than England, France, and Germany all combined. Can you imagine around the turn of the century, those first pioneers that came to Alaska? In this vast wilderness, those prospectors came up here looking for gold. And they probably carried their their supplies up through craggy areas like this, looking for that elusive metal. Well, I want you to know we're looking for gold too. The gold we're looking for is hearts for the kingdom. Now, if you have an adventuresome spirit, we would love to have you come and join us here in Alaska. You can be a missionary in some of these front line areas where we need people to come and work. I encourage you to take a look at our website, alaskaconference.org. This is my Alaska. For my Alaska, this has been Ken Crawford. Thanks so much for coming with me. If you enjoyed watching this series, if you're interested in what you've seen or what we're doing in Alaska, go to the Alaska website, alaskaconference.org, and there you'll find additional information. <laughs>